El Espíritu del Señor está sobre mí. Let us pray. God, we call on your spirit that was already here. We believe in tu Espíritu in this space. May it be upon us in a way that doesn't leave us the same as we entered this space. Because this is a time, and this is a holiness, and this is a calling upon each person in this room. And may the reflection on the bold words of the gospel convict us, charge us, and renew us for how you would call us today in the name of in el nombre de Jesús, of Jesus. Amen. El Espíritu del Señor está sobre mí. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Once upon a time, I met with a mentor. It was a particularly difficult day in my ministry, a time when I was so conflicted that I felt like, quite honestly, and I don't mean this hyperbolically, I really felt like I had to leave the church because it had disappointed me. Not this church, it was a different church. But the church had disappointed me more than I could bear. And my mentor, in her wisdom, had seen a number of these moments and decided to sit with me and my conflict. She'd known me for a while, you see. She'd seen the moments when I'd done some things that the church might consider to be big. And let me tell you, she wasn't impressed. She knew there might be something to my ministry, but she also knew that if I were to survive and thrive in this work, I would have to shift everything about it. Now, here's where I admit to my own foolishness. I thought I was called to what my friends and I had talked about as prophetic ministry. We were the ones in seminary, and I know we have a lot of seminarians here, but we were the ones in seminary who didn't particularly like what we experienced as the so-called traditional church and thought that an alternative to our own construct of church, at least as we'd seen it so far, would automatically be prophetic. We imagined ourselves as the one who would show up in sanctuaries with their empty and bolted-down pews and their tr worship of tradition, and we would show them the way, Christ-like, of course, <laughs> standing in front of the congregation and saying, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, as the people would immediately recognize our brilliance and settle themselves into their bolted down and antiquated pews to listen to our newly discovered wisdom. We knew everything it would take to fix the church. And it was going to be lucky to hear from us. I meet with many a seminarian or many a brand new minister who espouses such an entry into this so-called prophetic ministry. As for me, I tried this. I thought I could follow our Lord and Savior into the sanctuary, proclaiming the Spirit of the Lord upon me, and I expected the people to listen. Reverend Freeman watched me through that, which for the first two seconds or so, they did. But here's where I'm going with this. There's something of an epidemic of aspiring clergy who want to stand up and shout, who want a platform to dismantle without bothering with relationship. And guess what? The church ain't here for it. Which is why, from jump, I was incredibly excited to encounter the ministry of 
Michael Vanacore. He's an organizer. I mean, not just a name. He has brought thousands into the labor of movement because of his love of equality and justice. He is the real deal. But equally, if not more germane to this experience in this moment, is that he loves the church. He loves the rituals. He loves the particularities of community that are invited into a group of people who are committed to following Jesus Christ, and you're here, I would imagine, because of that. He loves and believes in waiting and listening for God, following Ignatian practices, which means exercising patience as a ritual in and of itself as he seeks out what God has to say before he even would dare to open his mouth. If only the rest of us would do the same. So many of us love to stand up in the temple with the confidence that the Spirit of the Lord has something for us to say, which it does. But a lot of the time, we'll speak with confidence without even bothering to ask God to refine our message. And please hear the nuance I'm suggesting here. There are plenty of people called by God to serve and to proclaim the gospel. The call is not the question. It's what they do with it. And this is where I want to highlight your discipline, Michael. You are called by God. That much is clear to everyone here, I imagine, right? Amen? Oh. I don't ask questions for silence. That much is clear to everyone who's here, right? Amen. Amen. Your ministry is important, though, because you have the right instincts and practices to go with them that refine that call. You know that there are lots of opportunities for God's message to miss its mark. And I believe that you are doing everything you can to ensure that that doesn't happen. Plenty of people say that they want to offer a prophetic ministry. And when I say this, I wonder who would sign up for that lifestyle? Do they even know the stories of the prophets? Who would sign up for that? Who would even want to walk into the ministry of Jesus knowing that after he proclaimed this Isaiah-inspired spirit upon him, the crowds led him to the cliff? They almost pushed him off. Who would sign up for that? They were so mad that they wanted to push him off. And if you want to prophesy for God, you have to know that you will be led to a cliff. And they will try to push you off of it. And that's going to rock you to your core. But here's the curious truth. No matter what, you will find yourself on that cliff if you're following Jesus. Everybody will, following Jesus. But the benefit of discernment, of the practice of asking God what God is up to and what God hasn't done, what God has done, is that when you get to the cliff, you will know who got you there. There's opposition enough to drive any of us to that breaking point. What you want to know is whether or not it was God who needed you to be there. Because there are plenty of struggles that the Lord has not led you to have. But the practices and the disciplines, the attuning of your ears to allow you to hear what God is saying and how God is still speaking even to you, even now, even forever. Those habits of the heart will take you far in the realm of the Spirit of the Lord, Michael. 
The anointing that you receive today is the anointing of a lifetime. You don't need anything more because you already have all of it. God has infused you with the inclinations and desires, wanderings and wonderings, and will always lead you back to the Holy Spirit. But when you forget, call on that Spirit. Call on that Spirit to teach you, to stand up, to unroll the scrolls of truth, to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim liberation and the end of captivity, to know that now is the time. Not later. Not when conditions are more favorable. Not when the board is more comfortable. Not when your congregation's strongest donors say it's okay. Now is the time of the Lord's favor on all of those things. And it is never ever appropriate to wait. But you know this. And know that proclaiming this will send you to a whole bunch of cliffs that will feel like the death of you. But listen. Listen for God. Look for the God who promises life in the face of death. And pay attention to the God who has a way of making the impossible happen. Hover over your edge and know the spirit of the Lord to be calling you to life. You haven't chosen an easy road, Michael, but you knew that. Know that you don't always have to lean forward into that chasm. You can lean back at times. You can rest sometimes in the arms of the one who wants to catch you in your own game of trust. You can always rest in the arms of your Savior who will never, ever let you go. And for that, for that incredible grace, for that gift that none of us deserves but is true for each of us, just don't forgive, forget to give thanks. I give thanks to God for you. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, who is and who was and who is to come, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness and the sovereign of the rulers on earth. The Metropolitan Association, New York Conference of the United Church of Christ greets you in the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church. To God, to God, for the power at work within us, is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask and think. Be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The Park Avenue Christian Church after carefully considering the call to ordained ministry of Michael Vanacor, respectfully and boldly requests that the Metropolitan Association ordain Michael Vanacor to the ministry of the Church of Jesus Christ, consistent with scripture and with the traditions of the Church Universal. The Metropolitan Association has reviewed the request of Park Avenue Christian Church. We have prayerfully examined Michael Vanacore concerning his fitness for ministry in Christ Church. We are pleased on behalf of the United Church of Christ to authorize the ordination of Michael Vanacore into Christian ministry. Michael. Servant of God, we invite you to come forward as a sign of your consent to receive ordination into Christian ministry and installation as the associate pastor of Trinity Lutheran Church.
The United Church of Christ acknowledges as its sole head Jesus Christ, Son of God and Savior. It acknowledges as kindred in Christ all who share in this confession. It looks to the word of God in the scripture and to the presence and power of the Holy Spirit to prosper its creative and redemptive work in the world. It claims as its own the faith of the historic church expressed in the ancient creeds and reclaimed in the basic insights of the Protestant reformers. It affirms the responsibility of the church in each generation to make this faith its own reality, its own in reality of worship, in honesty of thought and expression, and in purity of heart before God. In accordance with the teaching of our Lord and the practice prevailing among evangelical Christians, it recognizes two sacraments, baptism and Holy Communion. The United Church of Christ recognizes that God calls the whole church and every member to participate in and extend the ministry of Jesus Christ by witnessing to the gospel in church and society. The United Church of Christ seeks to undergird the ministry of its members by nurturing faith, calling forth gifts, and equipping members for Christian service. Ordination is the right whereby the United Church of Christ, through an association, in cooperation with the person and the local church of the United Church of Christ, recognizes and authorizes that members whom God has called to ordain ministry and sets that person apart by prayer and the laying on of hands. By this right, ordained ministerial standing is conferred and authorization given to perform the duties and exercise the prerogatives of ordained ministry in the United Church of Christ. Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. I heard the voice of the Holy One saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. How wonderful it is to see a messenger coming across the mountains, bringing good news, the news of peace. The messenger announces victory and says to Zion, Your God reigns. The Spirit of God is on me, because the Holy One has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, and freedom to those who are bound. Michael, before God and this congregation, we ask you, are you persuaded that God has called you to be an ordained minister of the Church of Jesus Christ? And are you ready, with the help of God, to enter this ministry and to serve faithfully in it? I am. Do you, with the Church throughout the world, hear the Word of God in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments, and do you accept the Word of God as the rule of Christian faith and practice? I do. Do you promise to be diligent in your private prayers and in the reading of the scriptures, as well as in the public duties of your office? I do, relying on God's grace. Will you be zealous in maintaining both the truth of the gospel and the peace of the church, speaking the truth in love? I will, relying on God's grace. Will you be faithful in preaching and teaching the gospel? in administering the sacraments and rites of the church, and in exercising pastoral care and leadership. I will, relying on God's grace. Will you keep silent all confidences shared with you? I will, relying on God's grace. Will you seek to regard all people with equal love and concern and undertake to minister impartially to the needs of all? I will, relying on God's grace. Do you accept the faith and order of the United Church of Christ? And will you, as an ordained minister in the communion, 
ecumenically reach out towards all who are in Christ and show Christian love to people of other faiths and people of no faith. I do and I will, relying on God's grace. Amen. People of God, you have heard the promises that our brother Michael has made. What is your will? By the grace of God, he is worthy. Let us ordain him. Come, Holy Spirit. Will you support Michael in the ministry of Christ? We will. That's good. <laughs> the laying out of hands is the symbolic act whereby the church in every age recognizes God's call to ministry in the lives of faithful women and men and asks that the Holy Spirit would confer on them the gifts for ordained ministry. So in recognition of that tradition and the importance of it, I invite now the clergy to come forward. Followed by everyone in this congregation who would like to come forward and extend a hand of blessing to Michael. We believe in the United Church of Christ of the priesthood of all believers. Given that, you have a blessing to bestow upon the Reverend to be Michael Vanacor. Amen. If you can't touch him, touch somebody else and let the spirit move through it. Amen? Let us pray. Eternal God, in wisdom you govern all things. From the very beginning, you have chosen faithful people to be in ministry and to serve you. You've called some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, others pastors and teachers, all of whom you have called for the work of the building of ministry and the building up of the body of Christ. So now, God, we have this servant whom you have called. And now, God, we come at this time to ask you to bless and sanctify by your Holy Spirit, your son, your child, Michael Vanacore, whom we in your name and in obedience to your will, by prayer and with the laying on of hands, now ordain him to the ministry of the church. We now, God, commit to him the authority to preach your word. We commit by the laying on of hands authority for him to administer the sacraments. We commit, God, by the laying on of hands the authority for Michael to exercise the responsibilities of pastor and teacher. God, apart from you, we can do nothing. But God, with you, we can do all things. So God, we ask that you come here and come now. Send your Holy Spirit upon Michael, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Ben Espiritu Santo. Veni Sancte Spiritu. Come with your power and anoint him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Come, God, and give him the power to bring good news to the poor. Give him the power to proclaim freedom to the captive. Give him the power, God, to, to give sight to the blind and give him the power to let the oppressed go free and give him the power now to proclaim that this is the year of the Lord's favor. Send your power, God. 
Send it now. In Jesus' name. Enable him, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Send your power, God. Send it forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Enable him, God. By nothing but the power of your spirit to place the call and let the same mind in him be in Christ, that was in Christ Jesus, Lord. Enable him to feed your people and nourish him in the gospel. Fill his speech with truth. Fill his life, God, with faith. Increases love for you, God. Increases dedication for you, God. And strengthen him in the time of trouble. And prosper the, your, the work of his hands, God. So that all that he does, does nothing else but bring glory to your name. Let your name be exalted through your servant, God. Let your power be put forth through your servant. And bless him this holy moment. We ask this in the name of the one above every other name. The name of Jesus the Christ. And the people of God said amen. 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 Thanks be to God. Why don't we stand for this moment? Michael, mi hermano, it gives me indescribable joy in the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and by the authority of the Metropolitan Association New York Conference United Church of Christ, I declare you are ordained <laughs> to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Tim. Yes. Congratulations, Rev. Please be seated. Michael, why don't you stand up here? Reverend. You ready for some covenant signing? Yes, sir. All right. Dear friends, Trinity Lutheran Church has declared that having gathered under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, it has called Reverend Michael Vanacore to minister as its associate pastor and teacher, and that it now receives him as appointed by God for this ministry. The Metropolitan Association of the Southeast Region of the New York Conference of the UCC has declared that Michael has met all the necessary conditions for this office. Michael? Seeing that you are called to ordained ministry by the grace of God and that Trinity Lutheran Church has been led to call you as associate pastor and teacher, are you willing to enter this covenant with its members who are one in Christ and in covenant with us in the Metropolitan Association? I am willing and I promise to serve this church faithfully, preaching and teaching the word of God and ministering the sacraments and fulfilling the associate pastoral office. All right. Members of the Trinity Lutheran Church, will those who are able rise and affirm your covenant with your associate pastor and teacher? Go ahead and go for it. Thank you, almost there. <laughs> Members of the Metropolitan Association, will those who are able rise and affirm your covenant with Trinity Lutheran Church and its associate pastor and teachers? We, the, the members of the Metropolitan Association of the United Church of Christ, gather with you, the people and the associate pastor and teacher of Trinity Lutheran Church as a sign of our covenant and in celebration of our mutual ministry in Christ's name. Reverend Chris, come on up with that covenant.
Reverend Kaji and Miss Stacy Mosher. Yes. Oh, good. These are the formalities. Michael, you're first. Basically, we're binding him to a life of servitude. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Reverend Freeman, will you come forward, please? There's a signature line that indicates this was received by the UCC conference, the New York conference. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Covenant sign. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Deacon Bennett, please come forward. Oh, no, maybe not. No, not yet, sorry. <laughs> Dr. Cruz, we invite you up to the pulpit for the charge to the ordinance. Amen. Amen, Dr. I was a little surprised when I got here and had a little conversation with Michael that I thought I was going to be reading a charge, and he says, no, you have to make something up. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so I just want to tell you, Michael, that I want to read a, 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 one scripture verse that says, he defended the cause of the poor and the needy, and so all went well. Is that not what it means to know me, declares the Lord. Michael, to know God is to do justice. Anything other than that is idolatry. Amen. Um, and my charge to you is this. I'm going to mention all the things that bother me about you. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. It bothers me when you want to visit an elderly sick person and you want to know how to do it right. <laughs> and you want to know all the details on how to get it right because you're going there with love. It bothers me because I'm a loner and you're always on my case. But Michael, continue to do that. Continue, Michael, to have the integrity that I know you have. Because on occasion, it gets on my nerve. Because when you have integrity, you create problems. Michael, continue to create problems. Not last but not least, I was thinking about Michael, and when I was growing up in a Pentecostal church, and I used to mock it a little bit, not the Pentecostal church, but mock this saying, the first love. Have you ever heard of that? That when people have the first love, that's when someone experienced conversion, and they were all excited. Cuando alguien se convierte por primera vez y se sienten todos excitados. I look at Michael like that, and sometimes it drives me nuts. Yo veo a Marco así y a veces me vuelve loco. But Michael, please, please, and I say this very seriously, please, continue with that first love. Don't be preoccupied with how many Twitter followers you have. <laughs> with how famous you're getting. Continue to have that innocent love. That's what the gospel is all about. Amen. 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 
Mi hermano Michael, I am deeply honored that you asked me to give the charge to the congregation. I already consider you my brother and my colleague in ministry, so I rejoice to participate in this way. Now to the congregation. In thinking of what kind of charge to deliver to you this day, the calendar came to mind. After all, it is 15 shopping days until Christmas. So, in recognition of this day, I want to issue this charge primarily to Trinity Lutheran Church, but perhaps to all of us in the context of best practices around gifts and gift giving. So first, congregation, I want to charge you to honor the gift that Pastor Michael Vanacore is to you. I unequivocally believe that Pastor Michael, as you will call him at Trinity, is a gift from God, a gift to the church, a gift to the United Church of Christ, and now a gift to you as the congregation. James declares, every good and perfect gift comes from God. And Michael Vanacore is a case in point of that statement. He is divinely created, grown in bucolic Middlebury, Vermont, infused with the beauty and color of both Italian and Chinese heritage. He is also forged with the zeal for individual change and social transformation as a union organizer. He's shaped by Dietrich Bonhoeffer and with a passion for discipleship that includes the willingness to sacrifice all for the hidden treasure of costly grace. He's a spiritual son of Oscar Romero, Gustavo Gutierrez, with a Pentecostal zeal for the liberation of everyone through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Any gift is the work of many hands, and Pastor Michael is no exception. So given so much that has been poured into this gift, I charge you to always keep that in mind. Always give thanks for the gift that he is to you and govern yourselves accordingly. Now, given this gift, I want to also charge you with what many are going to be doing with gifts this time of year. They're going to be unwrapping them. Undoubtedly, you have experienced some of Pastor Michael's gifts, but I'm doubtful that you've experienced them all yet. Some gifts, like gift cards, can be used for one thing now and something else later, amen? And during this time, exasperated parents and do-it-yourselfers are going to deal with gifts where some assembly might be required. Given this, I charge you to unwrap the gifts in Michael's package with kindness and with patience and with gentleness. That's important because some gifts are fragile <laughs> and they are to be handled with care. So don't be so over anxious to unwrap the gifts that you just rip everything off like people do and then maybe cause harm to what the contents are, amen? Unwrap them lovingly and gently and patiently. Unwrap them in the same spirit that they're given to you. Some gifts, in fact, like the Christmas socks I hated receiving as a child, may not be the gifts you need now, want now, but maybe the gifts you're gonna need later. Unwrap those gifts accordingly. And lastly, from my own experience with Christmas presents, gifts all too often suffer and lose their value from being overused. I can kick myself because some of the Hot Wheels I ran into the ground are worth thousands today. So I advise you, don't follow my example with Pastor Michael. The abundance of gifts 
that are in Pastor Michael are to be used wisely and with prudently and with sensitivity and discreetly. Many popular gifts need to be recharged, don't they? They come with either by batteries or electrical power. It's that analogy holds true with Pastor Michael. So given that need for recharging and renewal and revival, I exhort you, congregation, to be attentive to Pastor Michael's need to recharge. To, to recharge and revive himself and his gifts for ministry. Whether that's dinner with his beloved Rosa, whether that's continuing his mastery of karate and taekwondo and budaku, I don't even know what that is, but I wouldn't mess with it, I'll tell you that. Let him do whatever he wants to do on a Sabbath day, or if he wants to do nothing, let him do nothing. Any gift that gets no rest wears out. It gets burned out. So I charge you, congregation, to use Pastor Michael's gifts in such a way that the gifts that he has can keep giving and keep on giving back to you. So Trinity, especially, busload here. Amen. I've known of your ministry. I've known of your witness. I've known of, of Dr. Cruz for several years. And so we at the United Church of Christ are so glad because there is so much common in common that we have with your ministry of social justice and individual transformation and being a multicultural, multi-ethnic congregation. This is a good fit for you. No question. So we entrust the gift that is Pastor Michael to your loving care. And I charge you to unwrap it, honor it, and use its contents wisely. But if you decide to return this gift, do not worry. As will happen later this month, the United Church of Christ would be willing and have extended hours for gift returns. <laughs> and with many gifts, we'll take them back and re-gift them as needed. But today, may God richly bless you with this gift. Amen. Receive at our hands this Bible, of which you are appointed as an interpreter. Be diligent in the study of its message, that you may speak with the authority of truth and be a faithful minister of the word and sacraments. You are granted ordained ministerial standing in the United Church of Christ and in behalf and in behalf of its people, we offer you the hand of Christian love and a copy of the UCC's The Marks of Faithful and Effective Authorized Ministers and the Ordained Ministers Code as additional resources for you. And before we hear the introduction, there's another gift from Trinity. One moment. <laughs> Let me do it right. They're tricky. <laughs> That's it. Uh, 
fellow children of God, we see before us now the Reverend Michael Vanacore. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. If I could get a couple of deacons to help me move this, these out of the way. Thank you so much. We will proceed with the service of Holy Communion. Wherever you see an uh, asterisk, please be welcome to stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, you comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Santo, Santo, Santo es el Señor, Dios del Universo, Santo es el Señor. Santo, 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 Santo es el Señor, Dios del Universo, Santo es el Señor. O sana en el cielo, o sana en la tierra, bendito el que viene, el nombre del Señor. O sana en el cielo, o sana en la tierra, bendito el que viene, el nombre del Señor. Bendito eres tú, Señor de cielo y tierra, apiarándote de nuestro mundo caído. Diste a tu único Hijo para que todos los que creen en Él no perezcan, sino que tengan vida eterna. Te damos gracias por la salvación que tú nos has preparado por Jesucristo. Envía ahora tu Espíritu Santo a nuestros corazones para que recibamos a nuestro Señor con fe viva, ahora que viene a nosotros en su santa cena. La noche en que fue entregado, nuestro Señor tomó pan y dio gracias. Lo partió y lo dio a sus discípulos diciendo, tomen y comen. Esto es mi cuerpo, daro por ustedes. Hagan esto en memoria mía. Again after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to all, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Padre nuestro, que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre, Padre nuestro, venga a tu reino, sea 
haga tu voluntad, así en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día, perdona nuestras ofensas como todos nos perdonamos, Señor. Danos hoy tu amor y tu alegría, protégenos del pecado y líbranos del mal. Estás en el cielo, santificado, sea tu nombre, Padre nuestro, tuyo es el reino, tuyo es el reino, tuyo el poder y la gloria, Señor. Tuyo es el reino, tuyo el poder y la gloria, Señor. Amén. Abierta para todos y todas. Pueden pasar. The table of love and mercy and justice is open for all. You may pass. You may come down. Nuestro Padre nos invita a la mesa de la vida, donde hay vino y luz y pan, y nosotros nos unimos y lo nuestro compartimos, pues así es la comunión, pues así es la comunión. God extends an invitation to the people of creation where there's wine and light and bread. Here we gather in the thanksgiving and we offer all our living. Here the feast of life is bread. Here the feast of life is bread. Nuestro Padre nos invita a la mesa de la vida, donde hay vino y luz y pan, y nosotros nos reunimos y lo nuestro compartimos, pues así es la comunión, pues así es la comunión. God extends an invitation to the table of creation where there's wine and light and bread. Here we gather in a thanksgiving and we offer all our living. Here the feast of life is bread. Here the feast of life is bread. Yo 
siempre amaré esa cruz y en sus triunfos mi gloria será y algún día en vez de una cruz mi corona Jesús me dará cross so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me for the dear lamb of god left his glory above to bear it to dark calvary oh i'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down And I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Yo seré siempre fiel a la cruz de Jesús sus desprecios con él llevaré y algún día feliz con los santos en luz para siempre su gloria veré oh yo siempre amaré esa cruz y en sus triunfos mi gloria será Algún día en vez de una cruz, mi corona Jesús me dará. To that old rugged cross, I will ever be true, its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then you'll call me someday to my home far away. With glory forever I'll save Oh, I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down And I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown so I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown yo siempre amaré esa cruz y en sus triunfos mi gloria será y algún día en vez de una cruz mi corona Jesús me dará oh yo siempre amaré esa cruz en sus triunfos día en vez de una cruz mi corona Jesús me dará corona Jesús me dará mi corona Jesús me dará And exchange it someday for a The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. El cuerpo y la sangre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo los fortalezca 
y conserve en su gracia. Amén. Den gracias todos los pueblos, que todos los pueblos te den gracias. Te den gracias todos los pueblos, que todos los pueblos te den gracias. Señor, 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 gracias te damos por esta fiesta que hemos celebrado. Tu cuerpo y sangre hemos recibido. Volvemos a la vida renovado. We give you thanks with all the people, with all the people who give thanks to you. We give you thanks with all the people, with all the people who give thanks to you. Oh Lord, how good it is to live here in your house. In Christ we are united in one body. Oh Lord, it is a shadow of what is to come when we are met together in heaven. We give you thanks with all the people, with all the people who give thanks to you. Te den gracias todos los pueblos, que todos los pueblos te den gracias. thanks that in this bread and cup we have feasted again on your endless love. Let that love overflow more and more in our lives, that we may be preparers of your way, sowers of your justice, and bearers of your eternal word, our Savior Jesus Christ. Santo Dios, te damos gracias que en este pan y esta copa nuevamente hemos gozado del banquete de tu infinito amor. Derrame ese amor más y más sobre nuestras vidas para que seamos Preparadores de tu camino, sembradores de tu justicia y mensajeros de tu palabra eterna, nuestro Salvador Jesucristo. Amén. You may be seated. I just want to say this morning, this afternoon, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude. I'm overwhelmed with joy. Thank you all so much Amen. for being here. You are a gift from God this afternoon, so thank you. I want to uh, say particularly thanks and acknowledge my wife, Rosa. <laughs> who has been my faithful companion and who really has taught me what it means to be a Christian. And all my family members that are here, my dad, my mom, my sister, um, my aunt, my grandma, my sister and <laughs> sisters-in-law, everybody here, thank you so much for making the trip. You are my family, and I love you so much. To Pastor Kaji, thank you so much. To the whole family of Park Avenue Christian Church, um, I really, I'm overjoyed. I was baptized right here some four years ago, and so it is the greatest gift to be able to uh, take this next step in this same place. And also to uh, Richard Sturm, my, uh, where's Richard? <laughs> there he is. The chair of the elders here and has been my mentor since I've come here, since I've been here and has shepherded me along this journey. Uh, thank you, Richard. To Reverend Dr. Samuel Cruz, I don't know where he went. There he is. My uh, spiritual mentor, and the person who's taught me most, I think, about what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a pastor. Thank you, Sam. And to the Metro Association, thank you for accepting me into your arms as brothers and sisters in Christ, and to the, the continued guidance and fellowship that I'm sure I will be able to have walking along this path with you. To my friends from Union Theological Seminary, professors, any professors here from Union Theological Seminary, uh, the place where I really uh, gave birth to uh, where I am today. Thank you for being here. And my spiritual director, uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, Edgar Rivera Colon. Thank you for blessing me today. And everybody else, if I didn't, the, the musicians, the band. Raphael, <laughs> and all the musicians here, your blessing in my life every Sunday morning. And thank you for being here this afternoon, too. And now, would you rise? 
for the benediction. May the love and care of God who protects us as a mother hen protects her baby chicks. The grace and presence of Jesus who walks with us in our lives and struggles and the comfort of the Holy Spirit who guides us to new life be with you and all of God's people now and forever. Que el amor y cuidado de Dios que nos protege como la gallina cuida de sus polluelos. La gracia y presencia de Jesús que nos acompañe en nuestras vidas y luchas y el consuelo y la comunión del Espíritu Santo que nos lleva a la nueva vida. Sea con ustedes y todo el pueblo de Dios ahora y siempre. Amen. Amen. And before we go to the last song, I for, forgive me, Trinity Lutheran Church, for not thanking you first and foremost above, above all. A la iglesia de la Trinidad y mi familia allí, el concilio, los miembros, mis hermanos allá. Los quiero y les doy las gracias por aceptarme y por este, amarme como me han amado. Let us go forth now singing our last song, our closing hymn. Vámonos de aquí cantando el himno de cierre, enviado soy de Dios. The Lord now sends us forth.